the Stuart 7A model steam plant, this is part 21. After mounting the engine back on the baseboard, it's time for an interesting addition, which is a small Stuart steam pump. This has always been the plan, but I wanted to get the engine up and running and working perfectly with its reversing gear first. Here's the pump running. I made a video all about this pump quite a while back. I ran it on steam and it works perfectly. If you're a beginner watching this video and you would like to build one of these pumps from the castings, well, it's not a good idea if you're a beginner. They are quite difficult to make. It's best to get some experience under your belt first before you attempt anything as ambitious as this. At the moment I'm finding a suitable position for the pump. I want to keep it on its own little base and it will be finally fitted to the main base using double-sided tape. I found a spot for it on the baseboard, I'm just checking it with a ruler. One thing that spoils this steam plant is a very short stubby chimney on the boiler. I'm going to fit a larger one, this is the one off the Stuart 504, and I think it looks quite good on the plant. After filming this part, I phoned Blackgate's engineering and ordered some copper tubing. The outside diameter of the original chimney is only one and a quarter inches. The extension to the chimney will be one and three eighths of an inch in diameter. Now I need to modify the inlet to the condenser because we have an extra exhaust pipe to fit to it. The first thing to do is to remove the exhaust pipe and then the fitting that's screwed into the condenser. I loosened the union using a spanner first, but that part of the video didn't come out very well because my hand was in the way. So I moved on to the part when I took the union out with my fingers. After a very quick clean up of the brass cap of the condenser, I fitted this in place. A 5 16 by 32 T-piece. I was lucky, as I screwed the T-piece into the hole in the condenser, I rotated it and it ended up in exactly the right place. All I need to do now is apply some Loctite 542 to the thread and then introduce the T-piece permanently to the top of the condenser. If I wasn't filming, this part would have screwed in immediately, but the minute the camera rolls, suddenly threads don't engage, and I get a few problems down again. It's very strange, but it does happen quite frequently. In this clip, I'm just tightening it into position using my Barco spanner, followed by immediately cleaning off all traces of the Loctite 542, because this stuff removes paint, and the paint is easily marked anyway. Frequently, I touch them in with a paintbrush after they've been fitted. It's time to look at the steam pipe connections. The top steam pipe connection just needs shortening and a new union cone soldering in place. And thanks to the magic of video, the job was done in no time at all. I'm fitting the union first of all to the condenser and then to the exhaust outlet on the engine and that's the job done. I didn't put the exhaust pipe into the acid bath to clean it up, I did it the hard way. I used a piece of scotch Brite first, followed by the polishing spindle, and finally, Brasso wadding. This is the exhaust outlet on the pump. It needs tightening up a bit, I'm just making sure that everything fits OK. Both of these unions fitted to the pump are designed to fit 532nd or 4mm pipe. Time to do a bit of pipe bending. This is 4mm pipe, and if you don't already own one of these pipe benders, it's possibly a good idea to buy one. There's always a little bit of wastage when you bend copper piping, as the length of the pipe needs to be sufficient to go under the part at the left hand side of the bender. Then once the pipe has been bent, it's easily cut to size. And this is the finished size. As soon as the bend becomes straight again, it's fitted with a union cone. In this episode, I'm not going to show a lot of silver soldering. I've shown so much silver soldering in lots of videos, so if you want to know how to do it, please watch my How to Silver Solder for Beginners video. Very long pipes do not look good on steam plants, because in the full size they're made in sections, and that's why I've made the initial pipe shorter and I'm fitting a double union on the end of it. As I showed earlier, I need the pump to be 6 inches away from the edge of the baseboard. Now I need to make a piece of pipe to go from the double union to the exhaust inlet of the condenser. 
I didn't need to measure it, I just used my calibrated eye to estimate the length of the pipe. Then I marked the pipe where I need to cut it using a felt tip pen. Time to show you something very good and very useful. These are Union Adapter Combs. I buy these from my friend Chris English at CME Engineering and he makes them specially for me. On the right hand side, this is a Union nut which is 5 16 by 32 threads per inch and it's designed to take a Union cone for 3 16 of an inch diameter pipe. This Union cone is one of the special adapter unions because it's designed to allow the use of 5 32nd or 4 mm pipe. On the left side of the picture, this is a standard 5 32nd or 4 mm pipe union and normally I would use this type of union in a quarter by 40 threads per inch union nut. The need arises to use adapter unions when you're connecting steam or water piping using different thread forms. A quick cautionary tale, make sure you put the right nut on the right end before you silver solder the union cones in place. On the exhaust inlet to the condenser it's 5 16 by 32 but now it's fitted with a union cone adapter for 5 32 pipe which then uses a standard 5 32 or 4 mm union cone and a quarter by 40 nut. This clip shows the entire assembly with the double union in between the two nuts. Here's a view from above showing how the pipes run. I had to do a little bit of inventive bending around the pump. It's very important to think through piping before you rush in and make a mess of it and it's always good if pipes can run parallel to each other. Live steam inlet pipes are usually clad in string and then painted but exhaust pipes are left in copper. Just in case you're wondering I will be painting this pump green at some stage but not until I've finished all the piping and testing. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.